now. Is this really... <coughs> now... The lizard hangs from the gibbet, her face blooded and her scales discolored. Her eyes are closed, but her tongue flickers as you approach. Welcome to Driftwood, Godwoken. One bloody eye cracks open, glittering gold appearing from beneath the swollen lid. Chased... <laughs> Chased you all the way here from Fort Joy, did they? Very well, then. Cut me down. There is work to be done. Or indeed you could stand there gawping like a mutt at the dinner table. That is certainly all right. The Meister bears her teeth, stained a deep pink by her blood, and growls. Malady is unfortunately mistaken. I cannot train you, but I can certainly help you on your path, as long as I am free of this rope. Because along with torture and interrogation, the Magisters found space in their schedules to purge me, that's why! They spent quite some time at it, too. Apparently, I was a rich vein to be mined. And now I hang powerless as any butchered carcass. They stopped the process just as the last of my power drained away. Just enough to rob me of my strength, but not enough to leave me a hollow sack of flesh and scales. I... Oof. I had hoped they simply wished to preserve my charm and beauty, but no. It seemed Dallas had ordered that I be held until she could do the deed herself. To give it the personal touch, I imagine. Now that you have had that... <coughs> that delightful little nugget of gossip, perhaps you could do your damn job and let me loose? The lizard grimaces, shifting awkwardly as she dangles. I am in intense pain. You are either insufferably cruel or insufferably stupid. Insufferably cruel? How charming. It was obvious, Godwoken. You were whippet thin, implying you've been a captive. Your wrists have seen the sun, but your neck has not, so you sported a collar, not shackles. Thus you escaped Fort Joy. After an escape, any sane creature would rest, but the bags under your eyes indicate you haven't. Why not? You must have been chased. Thus, <coughs> thus you must have been important. No one important escapes a prison without help, and no one frees sorcerers bar the Seekers. They thought you were worth saving, and thus I surmise you are Godwoken. Now an important person does not come to Driftwood unless they seek someone even more important than themselves, so I further surmise you are here for me and will help me down. Now! A slow, pained grin spreads across the lizard's face. Her tongue flickers. Not... not quite as stupid as I imagined. I am still head of the Seekers, boy. I can taste your sauce. It wafts about you like honeysuckle on the breeze. Now, if you would be so kind, my bonds. The Meister bares her teeth, stained a deep pink by her blood, and growls. Malady is... Unfortunately mistaken. I cannot train you, but I can certainly help you on your path. As long as I am free of this rope. Be quick about it, before the Magister realizes their prize catch is about to slip through the net. What are you waiting for? Do it, damn you! If they find out what you are, you'll be blessed to end up hanging beside me. Excellent. Now, if you'd be so kind as to gut that startled-looking magister, it would be much appreciated. I must secure my home before they do any more damage.
cornered.
sister's back. She doesn't feel like playing, but... <laughs> the Meister sits slumped in a chair, looking around the room as she works her shoulder with one hand. It looks like it was dislocated by the gallows. Red cloak baboons ransacking my wardrobes. It was as if I would keep each valuable secrets in a pile with my unmentionables. She takes a deep breath, and with a twist, a click, and a screech of pain, she shoves her shoulder back into its socket. <laughs> I swear by the seven if, <laughs> if we did not have more important matters to attend to. Reaching across the table, she pulls a bowl of hot water towards her and fishes some bandages, a needle, and thread out of a box. She slowly starts to tend to her wounds. At least the barbarians were unable to club their way into my vault, so everything you need should be safe. In your case, more than I suspect, man, god or even reptile can provide. However, we must soldier on. It is not enough to be godwoken in order to ascend to divinity. There is a process. As she speaks, the Meister uncorks a vial of shimmering liquid, sauce. She lets a couple of drops fall on her hand, but instead of infusing with her body, they quickly evaporate on her scales. She stares at the empty spot on her palm for a long moment before turning back to you, continuing as if nothing had happened. A process by which Godwoken may ascend. It begins with discovering your deepest self, delving into your own soul. Enthusiasm? On a weekday? My word. We shall begin once we have <coughs> the tools we need from my vault. You may have been chosen, Godwoken, but becoming divine requires more than a supernatural pat on the head. Come, Godwoken. It is time to see just how awake you are. Fortunately, the Magister's people you are to say due to fashion. Kindly remove that painting from the wall.
I pray my instructions will not be too... Your talent for following simple instructions fills me with wonder and push the button. Now, kindly go to the vault and enter the A stone door lies flush with I the floorboards. Etched wood. Taking your time, you carefully enter the combination. The metallic sounds of the tumblers falling within the mechanism let you know you entered the code correctly. Excellent. Follow me. Your time is at hand, Godwoken. The Meister is examining her wounds, prodding at this, wincing at that. Her face seems grim as she turns to you. Do you know what it means to have the power of the divine, Godwoken? Just so. To accept divinity is to accept responsibility for the lives of every person and beast that walks Rivalon. If granted divinity, you would have the power of all seven gods at your disposal. You could heal any wound, pull islands from the sea, right any injustice, but make no mistake. The Divine has only one duty, to protect this world from the void. The Divine cannot use his power for anything else. Very well then. Let's see if we can't snatch divinity from the jaws of the void. The ritual itself is quite simple. Drop some black root in the bowl, mix in a little blood, set the concoction aflame, and then inhale the smoke. Ignore any feelings of dizziness, burning in your lungs, or a dire sense of existential dread. They're all perfectly normal. Although you will need to set everything you need is here. Ingredients in the cupboard, sauce in the glowing fountain, ritual in the tome by the bookcase, even an incinerator to provide a flame. The Meister looks back at her wounds, curiously prodding them as fresh blood oozes out, staining her claws. Quite. Mind you, being torn asunder by a void woken would be even more inconvenient. So if you wouldn't mind... The Meister points sharply to the ingredients cupboard. And do not lose anything. These ingredients are rare indeed. I'm not hiking back out to the cloisterwood to fetch you more black fruit.
Opening the door, you see a selection of ingredients thrown together. After a quick rummage, you spot the black root nestled between the grated dragon's tongue and trudenay oil. You gather up the black root, obsidian lance, and ancient bowl and kick the door of the cupboard closed. Lucky find.
Are you simple? Perform the ritual. Ingredients in the cupboard, ritual in the book, sauce in the fountain. suck the smoke deep into your lungs, your vision starts to swim and cloud. There is an intense pounding in your head, and you can feel the world fading. The smoke burns your lungs, but you don't feel any different. Your vision slowly starts to clear. 
You're still standing exactly where you were, a faint burning sensation in your chest. Perhaps this ritual is not meant for you. Are you simple? Perform the ritual. Ingredients in the cupboard, ritual... As you suck the smoke deep into your lungs, your vision starts... As the world fades away, you lose all sense of being grounded. You reach out, but you could feel yourself falling slowly. Deepest recess of my soul. But it looks like the Hall of Echoes. Bathed in the half-light of these starless bounds, you spot a figure you could only describe as a second self. It looks haggard and weak, its very voice but a feeble echo of your own. Ivan, my wolf, come, come closer, so that you may see me as stubborn as ever. But you will look me in the eyes. The apparition clasps your face in its shaking hands. You suddenly feel your eyes tingle. Everything becomes brighter, sharper. Blacks and whites become glorious bursts of color, then fade back into their accustomed spectrum. Blind eyes shine brightly. Speak the spell and see. stands the god Rabbit in all his spectral glory. You know me now, don't you? I saved you from drowning. I blessed you, made you powerful. And now I've come to seek some power in return. Your god-woken soul is my last refuge, my last bastion. May as well make the best of what you have to offer. Rannick nourishes himself from the source that abounds in your presence. You feel it deep down inside yourself. Ah, yes. Just what I needed. I tell you, dying just doesn't become a god. The void itself is hunting down the gods, leeching us in ways we never thought possible. Droplet by droplet we are being drained. We're battling for our very survival. It's a battle we're losing. And should we truly lose, all will be cast into oblivion. You save us both, as a matter of fact. You must realize, Ifan, that our fates are now as one, just as our souls are now as one. We are I. Together, we are a force to be reckoned with. But if we seek to survive the onslaught of the Void, we stand no chance unless we become vastly more powerful than we are now. That means there is but one place we can go. The Well of Ascension. It is a lake, a pool of pure source in which the powers of the Seven lie united. We gave them up freely to create the First Divine. Each of us donated half of that which makes us gods. To bathe in the lake is to become our chosen. That is where the road to divinity leads, and you must be the first to reach it at all costs. It was a time of selflessness and sacrifice in the face of our old enemy. It was an act of heroism and a dreadful mistake. A mistake we must rectify. The Void is stronger than ever. A new divine won't be enough. You need to go to the Well of Ascension, not to bathe in the source of the Seven, but to take it. All of it. Only he who claims everything will be everything. The Void's doom. This world's liberator.
It's very simple, really. They will either bow to you or be undone. But of course, that is what they are saying to their own god Woken as we speak. We both know they won't bow, just like we both know you will never bow to them. Only one can become a god strong enough to safeguard our world. One. At the expense of all others. So make no mistake, Ifan. Chances are the road to divinity will be paved with dead gods. Their blood on your blood-red hands. But don't let that dismay you. For these sins will be washed clean by the knowledge you committed them to save all of existence. To save your kin. And your loved ones. And the world they live in. Of course the ends do justify the means. Life. Or the eternal void. If you choose life, you choose the well of ascension. I will lead you there when you're ready. When you've become a true master of the source and speak the language of creation itself. Our journey will be fraught with peril. It is a pilgrimage of challenges that will require you to command source like only a god woken can and wield its most powerful spell. Coarse laughter rolls and echoes into infinity. You are already formidable, Ifan. But you underestimate just how much more formidable you could be. We are I now. The spells you need to know I will teach you when you are ready. But first, you must learn to channel the Source in greater volumes. That is why you need to seek Masters of the Source. You must make them teach you, so that you may become a Master in turn. So, return to Rivalon and seek out these sages where they dwell. Convince them to share with you their deep-seated bond with the Source. Once you have, you may return to me here. Something that will make you understand that for a god, there is precious little difference between the living and the dead. Source is. It is a constant, a subject of neither time nor transience. All of life is Source, and in Source it is. Immortally so. You have the vision of a god now. Eyes that can see spirits, the souls of the dead made manifest in Source. Speak the spell during your peregrinations, and you will see them. Where the dead lie, the dead linger. Best of luck, Ben Mezd. A man's spirit steps. Sweet Armadia, why do you test your chronicler so, haunting me with spirits? Am I cursed? Has the goddess turned her back on me? The chronicler shudders, looking sick to his stomach. Again. This again. I sleep, then I wake, and another piece of the world is gone. The Empress. It was her. It was that armor. I died for it, and now I'm trapped here. I died. Oh, Amadia. Why can't I escape? Why is there never a way out? Me? I archived Rivalon's history. I used ink to immortalize greatness on the page. A lizard empress sought my services. She needed an ancient design restored from a damaged text. She told me the design was brilliant. When the armor was forged, the empress showed it to me and... and... she trapped me inside. Consumed me. If it wasn't for me, the armor wouldn't exist at all. This... Oh, this is my fault. If I knew the way, I'd shout until every god heard me. But I have no idea. I simply want this to end. The Chronicler puts his head in his hands, collapsing in silence to fit. Go now, Ifan. The monster stares intently at you. 
Her eyes are tired and bruised, but determined. Still alive? Gods above, there might be something to you after all. She leans in, her bloody tongue flickering hungrily about your face. Tell me, what did you see? What do you know? She sighs impatiently as you hack up the last of the green smoke. You can't channel enough sauce. Gods be damned, why couldn't you have a nice simple problem? Finding an orc to dance the hornpipe, perhaps. I know exactly what must be done. You must find a master of source. And I could have helped you once, but no longer. The purging which the Magisters included as part of their service was quite efficient. They stripped me of my source. Not enough to silence me, but enough that I would not turn their insides to lime. Enough to sever my link to the font from which all source flows. And certainly enough that I cannot train you. So we must seek alternatives. Alas, the only source masters not yet hauled off to Fort Joy or turn into meat puppets are those too dangerous or cunning for the Magisters to contain. Sorcerers that allowed their power to corrupt them. Many are wicked, cruel, vile, and generally not good teacher material, but we may have no others to turn to. You will not be there long, I assure you. There is only so much you can glean from a twisted mind. However, it is the path we walk. No... <coughs> No matter what the cost. The Meister doubles over in a violent coughing fit, struggling for breath. After a few moments, she regains her composure, wiping a thin smear of blood from the corner of her mouth. No matter what is asked of you, you must learn from them. And you do not seem to be paying attention. Sorcerers, evil, controlling your source, saving Rivalon, please. <laughs> Please tell me at least some of this rings a bell. Your focus, your only focus, must be on finding these masters. On finding the secrets to the Magisters have kept ledgers with all known sorcerers. Especially the powerful ones not yet captured. They would be an invaluable resource. But do be careful not to get caught. I was their <coughs> guest for a time. And I promise you the gallows was the most comfortable part of the experience. And if their barracks turns out to be as empty as their skulls, just try to keep an ear to the ground. There may still be powerful sorcerers hiding in these lands. As she speaks, one of her wounds reopens, a dark red stain spreading across her tunic. She hisses in frustration and starts to bind the gash. I wish there was more I could do, but in this condition, I would be more a hindrance than a boon. Godspeed, and remember, do whatever it takes. What are you looking at? Egad, stop gawking at the shield. You ought to be quite used to such journeys into that stone realm by now. Meanwhile, the acorn draws nearer. I read through some tomes I saw that cranky old lizard carried. 
some fascinating leads, but nothing like the power we need to stop the Knights of Dre and their wicked plot. I, um, uh, <laughs> our gargantuan friend is easily impressed. Wait until it learns that I'm a knight, a scholar, and a wizard capable of saving the world. No, of course it knows that already, Quercus. Yes, yes, I'm aware it's the entire basis of our partnership. No, I most certainly do not feel the need to return the compliment. I owe our shield my life several times over. I hardly need to grovel and thank it each time. I'm sure it knows I appreciate it. Now, if you're quite finished ogling your favorite long-legged scratching post, we need to get on and save the world already. The Meister stares intently at you. Still on She leans. Tell me, what did you see? What do you know? She sighed. You can't channel enough source. I know it's the per not enough enough to tell me my sorcerers that allowed their power. You will not however the no matter what is asked of you, you must learn from them. Alas I am the magic to be and if they're As she I wish there was more I could do, but then this could The Meister sits slumped in her chair. You notice that some of her scales have dropped to the floor.
What news? Can you channel enough source? Are you powerful enough to proceed? Then why pray to... keeps glancing back. A difficult task since his shoulders are tense as iron. How can I help? 
I don't have a choice. You're the one wearing those gauntlets, dragging me around this way and that. I cannot do anything to prevent it. We are bound together. If I knew the way, I'd shout until every god heard me. But I have no idea. I simply want this to... The Chronicler puts his head in... divine upon you, good sir. My husband and I were just sitting down for a picnic under the sun. We haven't much to offer, but would you care to join us? In a hurry, are you? And you eat to arcs like we are? Oh, we wouldn't miss Lucian's day for the world. That's so, so lovely to hear. The more pilgrims pray for his return, the sooner Lucian will walk among us once more, just like the prophecy says. But listen to me going on and on even. Greetings! May the seven circle you and keep you safe. Ah, oh, it's a wonderful day, wouldn't you agree? And with good reason, too. Oh, for isn't it wonderful to look upon so simple a meal, bread and cheese, and be positively overcome with appetite? Why, only a few days ago, I was writhing in pain, having eaten from that rotten fish they dare sell on the market. But then a fellow pilgrim passed by, laid his hands upon my feverish skin, and just like that, I was cured. Alas, I cannot say who he was, but I can say what he was. A holy man. A stranger showing kindness to strangers, exemplifying the teachings of the divine. Fills my heart with gladness to know that there are still folks like him to be found, now that our Lord Alexander has fallen. May the Seven keep him. May they keep all of us. A so-called holy man who can heal with magic. I wonder if he might be one of the sorcerers Meister Siva wants me to find. The silent watches jaw. Startled, the guard leaps backwards and reaches for her weapon. She locks eyes with yours before releasing the grip on her blade's hilt. You shouldn't surprise me like that. Oh, I could have sliced your neck clean open. You'll be better off. Everyone's on edge. Void walking a flock to these parts like crows to carry in. Would be a shame for you to avoid a void walking's grasp only for a jittery peasant to strike you down. She remains in place, as rigid as stone. Is there more? Speak up! She raises her eyebrows and bites her lip. You'll need to tell Lord Raymond at the dock. He'll want word of this before he sails. Is there more on your mind? Am I in order to march against the ancient empire? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bishop 
Alexander was slain by Seegers. Culprit still at large. Justinia executes two dozen noblemen for insubordination. <laughs> Yes, 
slain my singers. Culprits get at last. 